Good evening, welcome to MM Today interview. I'm sure you guys are having a great night. Today we're going to talk about the most notorious topic of the season, air pollution. Let me introduce senior scientists for the Office of Research and Development and the Office of Transportation and Air Quality at the United States Environmental Protection Agency, Mr. Richard Baldoff. Good evening, sir. Good Thank evening. you for receiving our invitation. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. So let's talk about your mission, your, the reason you are here. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm here mm -hmm. at the invitation of the United States Embassy as mm -hmm. far as their international information program. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to share some of our experiences with air pollution in the United States, mm -hmm. as well as learn about the situation here in Mongolia and some of the actions being taken locally here. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you given uh, presentations in any way? Mm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I've given uh, several presentations, uh, some for the public, uh, some at the universities here, mm -hmm. as well as uh, talked uh, a lot with uh, folks in the government, mm -hmm. as well as, again, some public and uh, private organizations. Mm -hmm. So what were the presentations about uh, mainly? I mean, I know it's about air pollution, but right, right. what were the specifics about them? Yeah, so I, I, I try to give a general overview for some people, just background on air pollution, mm -hmm. why it's such a health concern, mm -hmm. why it, it should be considered important, mm -hmm. uh, some of the air quality management programs that we use in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, some specific areas, you know, I talk a bit about certain sources of air pollution, mm -hmm. certain uh, particular programs that we've implemented, a little bit about the achievements that we've made in the United mm -hmm. States and then a lot of what I've tried to do as well is uh, have opportunities for questions and answers again to expand more on what we do in the United States but to learn more uh, again about the actions and activities right. occurring here in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So let's go deeper to the presentations okay. and the topics. Uh, about the United States, has the United States faced this kind of air pollution in its history? And how do you guys prevent these kind of uh, these kind of air pollutions? And how do you guys to advertise the prevention to the public? Sure. Mm -hmm. So we did. We faced similar air quality problems, especially mm -hmm. in the 1960s and 1970s in the U.S. Mm -hmm. One of the key activities or occurrences um, that happened was we had the passage of the Clean Air Act. In, the mm -hmm. 19, in 1970, and this was a law requiring that mm -hmm. the United States meet air quality standards that protect public health mm -hmm. and that establish the United States Environmental Protection Agency as the, the group with the authority to implement those actions and that law in order to try and ensure that, that the United States overall mm -hmm. met these air quality standards. Mm -hmm. So in 1970, you guys came up with a law, right. mm -hmm. Act on Public Health, and uh, the part of it was prevention of air pollution. Mm -hmm. Right. The Clean Air Act was Clean really Air about, Act. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was about mm -hmm. protecting, uh, reducing air pollution emissions mm -hmm. and, again, protecting the public health mm -hmm. and ensuring the public is breathing mm -hmm. clean enough air you know, to protect their health. And how do you guys work on government level to work to advertise these kind of laws? through what kind of management, through what kind of infrastructure or system? Yeah, so w we don't necessarily have to advertise because this is a law, so it's required. Uh, but we do have programs where we try to help mm -hmm. communicate what are the concerns with air pollution, why it's important to control air pollution, why our regulations and this law is very important to the public. And we also try to advertise that there's not just the health benefit, but that there's an economic benefit as well mm -hmm. to reducing air pollution and overall improving air quality. Uh -huh. Economic benefit. So you guys look at the economic benefit and the reduction of air pollution. Right. So, uh -huh. Right. So by law, we're not required to look mm -hmm. at the costs, but we always try to because we really want to implement the most effective air pollution mm -hmm. strategies, not just from reducing air pollution, improving mm -hmm. the environment, but trying to be as most cost effective as possible too. So we do, we look at how much it's gonna cost from either technologies or cleaner fuels, mm -hmm. how much it's gonna cost to implement those, 
but then what are, again, the economic benefits from reducing actual deaths to reducing the number of hospital admissions, actually uh -huh. reducing the number of times like people need to take off work because of illness mm -hmm. or kids need to miss school because of illness. So we try to incorporate all that and show that there is an economic benefit to controlling air pollution as well as just this environmental and public health benefit. Mm -hmm. So you've come here, uh, well, I mean, to give, to share the experience, but you've seen the air pollution in Mongolia, mm -hmm. especially in Ulaanbaatar. And what do you think the role of the public to, to fight with this air pollution? The public will be very mm -hmm. important. Um, mm -hmm. From my short time here, but my experience is you have three major sources of air pollution. So mm -hmm. you do have power generation, so the power plants. Mm -hmm. You have your cars, buses, uh, trucks, so mm -hmm. the, the vehicle side. And then obviously you have the uh, residential cooking and heating, in the, especially in the Gare districts. Right. Um, I think the public will be involved in all of those, but the Gare district will be uh, very unique in that the public is going to be a very, very important mm -hmm. uh, partner mm -hmm. in improving the uh, emissions from those sources. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be just a technological fix. There are. Mm -hmm you know, methods of and technologies available to reduce pollution mm -hmm. from those sources, but they have to be used correctly and they have to meet people's needs. If they don't meet mm -hmm. people's needs, there's, they're not really serving a purpose. Mm -hmm. So they have to have this, this, this uh, dual benefit. And so the, the public is really going to be an important part of that. So back at home, and uh, uh, we've talked generally about how uh, your work goes on, but uh, can you give us an example of your recent project on, you know, on public health or the air pollution in this field? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, well, we have several. Um, first, actually, I'll talk mm -hmm. on the transportation side. We've uh -huh. had a number of recent policies over the, the last several years uh, to greatly reduce emissions. So one is mm -hmm. I improving fuel quality mm -hmm. so that uh, the fuel quality not just reduces overall emissions, but it allows for more advanced pollution control equipment mm -hmm. to operate properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've implemented that, things like putting what's called a particulate filter on like buses and trucks and other large diesel vehicles has reduced emissions mm -hmm. greatly, like o over 95%. 95 percent. 95 percent, Yeah, right. particulate matter emissions. Uh, other technologies also to reduce nitrogen oxides and other pollutants that are being emitted. And that's been from a regulatory standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also, though, do programs um, that help either cities and as far as city planning or mm -hmm. even individuals to reduce their especially exposures to air pollution as oh, well. And right. sometimes reduce and improve air quality overall. So we have a project where we work with cities on how they can use vegetation, trees, and bushes mm -hmm. as a way to reduce air quality, especially very close to sources, so like very near a, a large roadway or mm -hmm. for the Gare District, again, right near uh, the, the source of emissions uh, mm -hmm. from the residential heating. And vegetation can actually improve uh, particulate matter concentration, sometimes as much as 50% if designed correctly. Mm -hmm. um, they don't always have an impact, but if designed correctly, it can actually be a great impact. So right. that's been of interest with cities. Mm -hmm. And then we also have developed what we call best practices. So um, activities or actions people can take to at least reduce their exposure. Uh, educational programs. Educational uh -huh. programs, right. Mm -hmm. So we have a best practices for schools mm -hmm. that are located mm -hmm. near air pollution sources. Again, could be a road, could be near residential heating in the Gare District. Mm -hmm. um, so things like indoor air filtration, how they you know can bring in the appropriate filters to help mm -hmm. improve their indoor air quality. Even simple things like when air pollution especially is worse in the mornings, um, not opening the doors or opening the windows, mm -hmm. but trying to keep the indoor uh, sealed, especially if there is filtration, so mm -hmm. that filtration can work. Mm -hmm. Ways to bring kids to school, even routes to school. So for oh again, right. roads, you know, don't have the kids walk 
down the major thoroughfare where there's a lot of traffic, if they can go one block mm -hmm. where there's less traffic, their exposures can be much less. Mm -hmm. Or again, within the GER district, if there's a route where there's lower pollution, fewer emissions occurring, that can actually reduce their exposures at least quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, okay, this time <laughs> I want to ask your personal perspective. Okay. Because in Mongolia, our government has been uh, trying uh, several steps to reduce the air pollution in Ulaanbaatar, but uh, it hasn't succeeded, obviously, but we are still working on it. If you were part of the government of Mongolia, what would your first step towards, <laughs> <laughs> towards the solution? You, you know, yeah. every, uh, every perspective and every angle counts. So <laughs> right, no, I do what understand. Mm -hmm. I guess the first thing I would mention, because there has already been uh, several mm -hmm. actions taken, mm -hmm. and you might not always see the results in air quality mm -hmm. because you're dealing with, as you're reducing emissions, as more people are moving in, that's offsetting it mm -hmm. some. But there still are likely benefits from the programs that have already been implemented. Right. Um, it's just they might not be as big as people mm -hmm. want right away, but there are benefits. And that's one thing first to consider is that this is a long-term issue, a long-term mm -hmm. solution. It's not likely going to be solved within a year or two. It's going to take a number of years. In the U.S., it's mm -hmm. taken us 30, 40 years. 30 to 40 yeah, years. Yeah, now I'm wow. not saying it's, that's going to well, have to I be mean, the case yes. in Mongolia, mm -hmm. but just to be realistic, it's mm -hmm. a long-term solution. It's not just a short-term solution, right. but already some of the steps taken are going to head in the right direction. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of clarify that. Put that first. Yeah, uh, yes. just clarify that. Uh -huh. But there are definitely more steps that can and should be taken mm -hmm. Um, as I mentioned, there's really three main sources. Mm -hmm. The Gare District, obviously, with the residential cooking and heating, but mm -hmm. transportation and uh, the power generation are actually probably larger sources than I think a lot of people realize, especially during certain times. Mm -hmm. Even in the winter, you know, there's a, a big contribution, more of a contribution, actually, from mm -hmm. emissions from both those sources than would occur in the summer anyway. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that summer air quality tends to be better than winter yes. isn't just because of the residential cooking and heating the transportation and power sources also emit more during that time of year mm -hmm. during those cold temperature conditions oh, we have to take that into consideration yeah, at I the same time i do I, so i think you really want to address all those sources mm -hmm. can you uh, talk about the air quality uh, quality monitoring system you guys have in the uh, united states sure mm -hmm. uh, um, we have stations throughout the United States that measure gaseous pollutants as well as particulate matter. Mm -hmm. um, some might be familiar. There's particulate matter that's 10 microns or less in diameter mm -hmm. and particulate matter that's 2.5 microns mm -hmm. or less in diameter. And I won't go into detail, but they have kind of different effects and different sources. Mm -hmm. But we have about 2,000 stations in the U.S. that monitor the gases and about mm -hmm. 1,500 monitors in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that monitor the particulate matter. Mm -hmm. uh, the methods we use, they're fixed stations. They are fairly, you know, relatively expensive. It's very similar, actually, to the monitoring network that's here that's in Ulan mm -hmm. I believe there's 11 monitoring mm -hmm. sites uh, throughout the city. Actually, the United States Embassy has an air quality monitoring site as well that mm -hmm. can provide information. Well, we have one outside oh. of our organization. There's one. Right, it's a, it's that's a actually machine, right? Yeah, to, that's to actually the... the I don't know if this, uh -huh. that's actually the building between your building and the school. And the school, there's yes, a little, there's, there's a monitoring site. And right that's what, what we're talking about. Yeah, right. so that's one of the mm -hmm. city's mm -hmm. um, monitoring stations. And all that information is actually available online on the website mm -hmm. so you can see real time what mm -hmm. the air quality measurements are at mm -hmm. that site as well as uh, the other ones in, in mm -hmm. the city. So, it's mm -hmm. so based on those information, you guys, get, uh, you guys come up with plan. And to have plan, you have to gather ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So at your organization, how do you guys uh, uh, gather the ideas and you know choose which one is which? <laughs> no, that's a great I question. Mean, yes. Yeah, and some of it is that we conduct our own research, so mm -hmm, we develop course, control mm -hmm. strategies. We do that, but we actually so you know actions like what I'm doing, visiting Mongolia. We we do 
travel the world. We try to learn what is mm -hmm. occurring in other places, what are actions that they've taken that have mm -hmm. been effective. Sometimes just as important, what are actions that have been taken that have not been effective. So uh -huh. well, we call uh -huh. lessons learned yes, know, from lessons others' learned experience. So that's why we try to have a lot of this international dialogue so we can all learn from each other. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we have standards in the U.S. There's the WHO standards, mm -hmm. the Europeans have standards, uh, China now is developing mm -hmm. a lot of standards. So, so there's a lot of uh, activities, again, going on internationally, and we're really trying to learn from each other. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much sure, thank for you. sharing your experience and coming here to share your experience. That's a great thing. <laughs> and uh, I wish you good health in the future. And, uh, Last minute is yours. If there's anything you would like to say to our audience, to Mongolians. Uh, well, mm -hmm. again, I just want to thank you for the invitation. Thank you for being so hospitable during my visit here. And I'm looking forward to, to seeing and hearing the progress. And uh, we've already, too, talked about some mm -hmm. international cooperation and collaboration. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds and to, I believe, seeing uh, progress on, on air pollution issues here in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really do hope we will uh, <laughs> we will fight with this pollution and we win in close future. Yeah. I, I have confidence. I, <laughs> I think it'll go well. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you. And that's all for today. Thank you for being with us. You're watching MM Today interview. We'll see you on next Tuesday with more news and updates. Have a good one. Bye bye.